and welcome. I'm Millicent Walker. Tonight, Christians in Nigeria join their counterparts around the world to mark Palm Sunday. Suicide bomb attack marks celebrations in Egypt. Suspected militants killed two soldiers, including an army captain and five policemen in a gun duel at the Kurdu area of Lagos State. And gunmen kidnapped Cross River State Commissioner for Water Resources in Calabar, South Local Government Area. Swedish police confirmed that suspect behind Salk home truck attack had extremist sympathies and was facing deportation. We we'll begin tonight with Christians across the world celebrating Palm Sunday as part of activities marking the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Here in Nigeria, the day was commemorated with processions along major streets with palm fronds and olive branches being displayed by Christian faithfuls. Also, messages emphasizing the need for Christians to be steadfast in prayers and good deeds formed a major part of the day's activities. A reenactment of the triumphant entry of Jesus is what is going on here in Lagos, with a procession across streets. Palm fronts and olive branches are an important part of this event, replicating what the people of Jerusalem used in welcoming Jesus from the Mount of Olive into the city. In his message, the parish priest of St. Leo's Catholic Church, Lagos, emphasized the importance of good deeds. procession took place in Anambra state in spite of the early morning rains. The vicar of the Church of the Holy Spirit upon return to base conducted the blessing of the palm which he prayed would be signs of victory. These palms be for us a sign of victory Amen. and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever help him as our king Amen. and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In Jos, Plata State, a group of worshippers seized the opportunity of the Lenten season to draw attention to the issue of abortion, which they say has become prevalent among young people today. We all pray and ask God for the souls that we've lost through the act of abortion because we're meant to believe that every life is precious and life begins at conception. So for the act of committing an abortion in any form is murder. Meanwhile, in River State, the third synod of the Anglican Communion Diocese of Eche to mark the Palm Sunday was the platform used by the governor to request the church to remain a beacon to the society. For us, as government, we must continue to support the church. Because the church has always been praying for us. The peace we have today is because of the church, their continuous prayers and I urge you not to relent. Other activities that would precede the death and resurrection of Christ include the Last Supper, which will be celebrated on Thursday. Chris Elams, Channels Television News.
Well, staying with Christian faithfuls, marking Passion Sunday today, it was a deadly Palm Sunday for Egypt's cops as at least 45 people were killed after twin explosions rocked two churches north of Egypt. It's the latest explosion as Egypt Christian minority have often been targeted by Islamist militants in recent years. While Pope Francis calls for an end to terror at the Vatican, Coptic Christians in Jerusalem and around the world condemned the attacks. Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It also signifies the beginning of the Holy Week, marking the last week of Lent. While Christians all around the world trooped out in songs and gesture, in Egypt, things took a different turn when a suicide bomber blew himself up after he was stopped from entering St. Mark's Coptic Church in Alexandria. An earlier blast at St. George's Coptic Church in Tante killed 29 people, including three police officers. Officials say the two blasts targeting Coptic Christians in Egypt left 42 people dead, injuring more than 100. Celebrating Palm Sunday Mass at St. Peter's Square at the Vatican, Pope Francis, who is due to visit Egypt later this month, condemned the blast. I pray for the dead and the injured, and I'm close in spirit to their families and the entire community. May the Lord convert the hearts of people who sow terror, violence and death, and even the hearts of those who produce and traffic in weapons. In the Middle East, worshippers attended Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem. The Coptic community celebrated the day and also voiced their anger and sorrow over the explosions. We want to feel safe. We have to stand up for this. And when someone does something like that, they should not say he is crazy or insane or to put it under any name. We need the government to stand with the Christians because what is happening is horrible. The blast was the latest assault on a religious minority that has increasingly been targeted by Islamist militants, so-called IS, who claim responsibility for the attacks. In the Philippines, almost 8 out of 10 Filipinos are Catholic, and devotees could be seen with their palm fronts blessed during Sunday service to start Holy Week rites. And the Anambra State Chapter of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN, has held its maiden 50,000-man mega pat prayer rally in Oka, the state capital. At the event, the Christian faithful were afforded a time of intense prayers for the state and Nigeria. Highlights of the event was a unanimous endorsement of the state governor, who they say has done well among his contemporaries. Thousands of Christian faithful under the auspices of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN, and Ambra State Chapter, taking up every available seat and space at Dr. Alex Equeme Square, Oka. It's the maiden edition of a 50,000 man prayer band specifically raised to pray for Nigeria and their home state, Anambra. On this occasion, the prayers were conducted by a renowned evangelist, Reverend Omar Bai. speeches were fashioned into the progression, bothering all the need for intense prayers for Nigeria and the state governor, who appears to have done exceptionally well for his state. Our nation is going through very tough economic challenges, and there's need for God's intervention. We believe in the power of corporate prayer to address these lingering issues. Here in Anambra State, we need to uphold our dear governor, His Excellency, 
Chief Dr. Willie Obiano in prayers for the good works that he's doing and that God will continue to strengthen and guide him to do more. Appreciative of the atmosphere, Governor Biano promises to create an enabling environment for the harmony of all Christian groups. The PFN hospital is also to receive a boost of 10 million naira from the state government. Archbishop Eberi uh, told me about a challenge that you have where the church you are building was pulled down and your land confiscated. I'm not happy to hear those kinds of things. I've asked him to uh, send me a proper note on that with a view to returning that land to you. A session of prayer by everyone present and supervised by the clergy will not be too much to ask. And as it is said, wisdom is profitable to instruct. Security agencies today recorded a major loss as two soldiers, including an army captain and five policemen, were killed by suspected militants in the Kurdu area of Lagos. A source confirmed to Channel's television that the body of the slain captain, simply identified as Mohammed, and other victims have been removed from the scene. The militants were led to have struck around Woodland Estate close to the Sao Creeks and engaged the security personnel in a gun duel. Meanwhile, the new assistant inspector general of police in charge of Lagos and Ogun State, Adamu Ibrahim, has activated a response and intelligence team to Kurdu area. The spokesperson in charge of Zone 2, Dolapo Badmos, did not confirm the number of casualties, but told Channel's Television that a team of anti-kidnapping operatives have been deployed to the area to forestall any further occurrence. Ishawo. One of the clusters of communities in the Korodu area of Lagos. Most of the residents here are homeowners, but have a major challenge at hand. The frequent attacks by militants, which they allege has caused some of the occupants to seek refuge outside their homes. In the early hours of Sunday, an attack broke out between the militants who had found their way back to the community and security operatives deployed to the area. An eyewitness told Channel's Television that one of the landlords in the area took security operatives to their hideout. The militants engaged them in a gun duel and bombed the police van conveying the landlord and the officers. He also hinted that four policemen lost their lives. The divisional police officer is receiving treatment in the hospital while some residents were also kidnapped. In August 2016, the militants, mostly kidnappers and pipeline vandals, were chased out of the community and creeks owing to bloody clashes with Ishawo residents, which led to the death of scores of people in the community. Since then, a deployment of Joint Military Task Force with Operation Codename Awasi has been permanent in Ishawo, Okemuti, Igbo Olomu, Lekwete, Itaoluwo, and Magbon community. Staying with security, gunmen earlier today kidnapped the Cross River State Commissioner for Water Resources, Mr. Gabriel Oduoji, in Calabar, the state capital. Confirming the incident to Channel's television, the state's Deputy Commissioner of Police, Tunde Bolarumi, says the command has blocked all exit roads leading to and from Calabar with a strict stop and search exercise in and out of the city. According to the DCP, the police and other security agencies are doing everything possible to ensure the safe release of the commissioner which intelligence reports say is still within the state capital. He appealed to the public to avail security agencies with any information. And in part two after the break, socio-economic rights and accountability project asked President Bari to refer high-level official corruption cases to international criminal court. Do stay with us. <laughs> 